Hello everyone and welcome back to Top 7 Rec, where we dive into the world of entertainment and enjoy together. In this video, we'll count down our top picks for K-dramas to watch from 2008 to 2009. Now, let's begin. Number 7. The Kingdom of the Winds. Main leads, Song Il Guk, Choi Young Won, Young Jin Young, Park Gun Hyung. Not a lot of people know about this show. I started watching this one with the intention of just watching a couple of episodes. For days later, I had finished all 36 episodes. I enjoyed it immensely. What I like about this story is that the history is being told. A love story is also being narrated, though it is not the main focus. It is a well-told story that left me craving for more information from this period, during the reign of Goguryeo. Now I have to go back and watch Jamung, which was the predecessor to this drama. If you truly like historical dramas, you will like this one. I watched this drama after finishing Jamung, it is literally the sequel. The soundtrack for this show is breathtaking. After finishing the drama, I just can't get the soundtrack out of my head. Because the music is so good, it incorporates the scene in this drama. You can feel the scene getting elevated and intensified. I know I mentioned Jamung a lot, but the last point is that the main character of both shows is played by the same lead actor. I highly recommend this show to you. I know if you go for it, you'll watch all the episodes back to back. Number 6. Queen Si and Duck. Main leads, Lee Yo Won, Go Hyun Young, Park Yi Jin, Yu Sung Ho, Kim. Nam Gil, um, Tae Woon. I think this was the only series wherein I liked all the characters even the antagonists. Almost all of the main characters are smart and wise, therefore it was so entertaining to watch their political wars and power struggles, especially Diokman's and Miss Hill's fight for the throne. At first, I didn't like the character of Diokman, but as the story progressed, I found myself admiring her and cheering for her success. And I really liked the character of Miss Hill, my fave character but no doubt each and every actor slash actress was amazing. Do 62 episodes seem boring? Not at all, every episode captures your heart and makes you watch more and more. It convinced me to download all episodes so that whenever I got bored, I just play them and enjoy them. All in all, this was a great historical drama that made a deep impression on me. Plus, the soundtrack is harmonious. It added to the excitement and tension of the drama. Number 5. Boys Over Flowers. Main leads Gu Hai Sian, Lee Min Ho, Kim Hyun Jung, Kim Bum, Kim Joon. This was one of the most popular Korean dramas of all time and I don't know how many are going to agree with me, but this one's a classic. The plot is really cute. It's full of those chable cliches, but Joon Pyo does it so well, I cannot help enjoying it like hell. The acting is just bleh. Although I love Lee Min Ho and now is one of my favorite actors, in BOF he wasn't as good as he is now, it wasn't terrible acting, but it wasn't a good one either. Same for Ku Hai Sun, she's good at dramatic scenes and crying and suffering, but she lacks emotion in other scenes like kisses or funny moments, etc. And probably what makes this drama a must-see and a famous one is Yoon Ji Hu, Kim Hyun Jung, BOF probably has the worst and saddest second lead syndrome ever. Even if you don't ship Jandi with Jihoo the drama still makes you feel sad about Jihoo's life, a terrible and lonely one, OMG. My heart still aches when I remember. Despite all that BOF is a very rewatchable story, if you want to cheer up, or cry like crazy or just remember or see hot Asian boys gathered in one drama, just go to BOF. Number 4. Shining Inheritance. Main Leads. Han Hyo Ju, Lee Sung Ji, Bae Su Bin, Moon Chai Won, Ban Hyo Young. This is one of my favorite dramas ever. In all fairness, it has a slow start, but once you get into the thick of things, you'll realize it is one of those compelling, addictive dramas. I lost a large amount of sleep over this one. Just couldn't stop watching. It is funny, dramatic, duh, romantic, and has a bit of suspense. Not just romantic for the romance's sake, but that sweet organic, naturally occurring, out of nowhere kind of romance, with some heartwarming and swoon-worthy moments. The characters, at first, may seem a bit tiresome, 
but they have this uncanny knack to grow on you until you genuinely care for them and wish to see them happy, successful, or in some cases burn in hell. It will make you laugh and cry, which is what all good dramas should invoke. Throw into the mix a nice and sweet sounding music, and some pretty good cinematography. With all being said, you'll definitely enjoy watching it. Strongly recommended, not just to watch once, but multiple times. Number 3. Iris. Main leads, Lee Byung-hun, Kim Tae-hee, Young Jun ho Kim So-yun, Kim Sung-woo. A super powerhouse of an action thriller, Iris, the name for a North Korean top-secret national security agency, is filmed like a movie, not a conventional Korean drama. Iris remains the most expensive Korean drama ever made, and the quality shines forth in every frame. All the actors are first-rate, the writing is powerful and succinct, and never wastes a minute with non-essential content, the scenes shot in Budapest and Japan, are wonderful. The editing team must have been the best in the Korean industry, for the whole production is taut and professionally executed, smoothly building suspense endlessly throughout the whole show. It will be hard for you to say goodbye to this K-drama after its 20 episodes are over, and practically impossible to let go of the characters completely and forget them forever. I never expected that the character I would bond with the most in Iris, would be a North Korean communist agent, but there it is. Amazing. I laughed, cried, and smiled with and to the characters. It was hard not to watch the next episode just after finishing one, as it was very intense. And you know what? When I rewatched Iris, I had the exact same feelings and reactions. Isn't that amazing? Number 2. You're Beautiful. Main leads, Jang Gun Suk, Park Shin Hai, Yong Yong Wa, Lee Hong Ki. This is one of my most favorite dramas. And I loved the OTP, swooned over their romance. All the scenes where they spend time together, then the way Tae Kyung finds out about Mi Nam's feelings. The story is awesome and refreshing in the most cliche way. A girl dresses up as a guy and works with guys and falls for one of those guys. But out of all gender bender stories, this one would definitely stay with you forever. I mean, I've literally had some moments in my life where I suddenly zoned out and started thinking about random scenes from this drama and laughed hysterically, and then people looked at me like, did you just have a crazy woman episode, and I can't explain it to them because they just won't watch the effing drama. I mean, come on, explaining it is weird. Coming to acting. Every single person in that drama is epic. Like, seriously, all the characters, even Yung Yong Hwa, playing Shin Wu, who people keep dissing, saying he's a horrible actor, is just epic in your beautiful. Even the actors playing the smallest roles are epic. The music is mind-blowing. Definitely on my top 5 Korean drama OST, and you know how much competition the K-drama OSTs have. Without words, by Park Shin Hai has so much meaning to it, it just gives me goosebumps whenever I listen to it. So, in conclusion, everyone should watch this drama. It's a rite of passage for every Korean drama watcher. But I guess most of us have watched it already, but still, if you haven't, you should definitely put this one into your watch list. Number 1. Iljimi. Main leads, Lee Jun Ji, Han Hyo Ju, Lee Young Ah, Park Sher Hu. If you are looking for an awesome drama to watch, I recommend this one. I really liked this drama because the story made me feel like I was part of the drama. The story is similar to Robin Hood, but it's more sophisticated, powerful, moving, and gritty than the traditional English folk tale. It is, without giving anything away, is a revenge story. However, unlike most revenge stories, it has a heart. Our hero is not some morally conflicted guy who can't distinguish right from wrong, in fact, the drama does well by clearly defining the hero's morals and making sure that he never strays too far from them. It is beautiful to watch the story unfold and see our hero grow. Overall, the story is wonderful, however, the romantic aspect of the plot really did weigh it down. The drama does not suffer from bad acting at all. The cast fully suited their roles, and although Lee Jun Ki is partial to some overacting, it wasn't anything that detracted from the drama. The actor who played SEO Dole is amazing, that guy put me through emotional highs and lows, and he had amazing chemistry with Lee Jun Ki. I actually felt like I was watching a father-slash-son team whenever those two were on the screen with each other. 
Iljimi is a beautiful story with heartwarming characters and great scenes containing action, ethics, and humor. It really piqued my interest in the Seiguk genre. That's it for this video. Please note that this list is only based on my opinion and is not an absolute truth. We would love to read your opinions in the comments section, and if you like this video, please take a moment to smash the like button and subscribe. We also have selected two of our best related videos.